welcome in La Via Mista, so this is my studio. So this is uh, the battery, it's uh, actually the heart of La Biomista, and it's my studio. It's made by Mario Botta, the famous uh, architect. Um, so we were actually designing together because for me it was clear that there has to be a greenhouse and a big cage for eagles on top. And for me this battery is actually the conflict between nature and culture. And uh, I think this is really the uh, the content of, of my work. Um, I take you to this ones, uh, which I call Vesta, and Vesta are portraits um, of chickens. And these are the two primal chickens, and you, you see they look very intense. And um, what I like about these portraits is that they just like king and queen. You know, they, they have these old uh, portraits of the uh, of the old masters, in a way. Um, I'm working with a lot of taxidermy uh, because um, I'm, I never kill an animal. I never, I never do that. Uh, when it dies, you know, then uh, I do something with it. And uh, I have connection with different foundations when an animal is dying. I give it another meaning. For example, this one. If you see the owl uh, and the monkey is sitting on the pig, uh, it has a kind of, uh, um, you, you can say, an, an imagination of, an, of another world. That's why they are looking in this big globe, which is, uh, which is a mirror which is, uh, where they reflect themselves. And the crossbreeding is between a monkey and an owl, which I also have in the beginning of the park, is joy and wisdom. So I think. I think this is ruling the world. If you have a combination of those two things, you can move on. Um, like you see in the studio, I am used different materials because crossbreeding, in my opinion, is also on the level of materials. You know, uh, the crossing between marble and, and real eggs and taxidermy gives a kind of um, new insight, uh, the clash of materials uh, makes it, uh, makes the work, I think, intenser. This is the big studio. Um, actually, it's all studio. It looks maybe like an exhibition room or a gallery, but it's not. It's, um, um, it's a mixture of uh, different, uh, different kind of sculpture, but actually it's a place where I try to see uh, the content of the works, how they fit with each other. This piece is a very recent piece. This is how nature takes over culture. So the, an ancient um, finger, which is actually, I cannot say, but it's maybe a thousand years old, the, 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 the marble fell down and nature is taking over. The protection of their egg is there. So this is the middle of this. And actually it balances the, um, uh, the whole studio, I think. It's, um, for me, it is a very strong image because it's a vulture. Um, it's normally eating dead meat. So in this case, uh, he's eating culture, actually. So the giant claw um, comes always a little bit back in my work um, because the chicken was a T-Rex, a Tinosaurus rex, and if you, this is a real chicken leg. If you enlarge it in this scale, it becomes very frightening. So when it's very frightening, you know, you, it reminds you of the history. Immediately you can see that if there is an enormous animal like this, you don't have any thing to say. I'm working on a, on a big installation and this is actually for more than 20 years that I'm working on because these animals are mainly extinct. So the skin, sometimes you can buy them, you know, the, 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 the way that you buy it now is that, um, and I'm very glad with that, these of course are all 
died in captivity. And if you buy the skin, part of this, um, uh, part of this money goes for conservation. But for me also, I want, I want to give it a second thought. I want to give it this, uh, this, uh, the statue of a sculpture so that we can think about extinction. And actually, this work is talking about extinction. You have two animals who are fighting for the world. And this is actually the start of the, uh, of the studio. This is the, the place where um, I always say the lovely birds are living. So they are also on the border of extinction, like uh, the hornbills, for example, or the, 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 the chrome pigeons. And when they have youngsters, we bring them back in foundations, and the foundations will uh, rewild them. But this actually are in very much contrast with the big uh, cage that we have upstairs. And the cage we have upstairs are the two stellar eagles. They are endangered, you know. But I, when I open that cage and when I open this cage, you know, the eagle will catch these animals immediately. So the question between nature, culture, between captivity, freedom, um, all these kind of questions, domestication and wildlife, it's all in this building as well. He's trying to breathe and he's very angry. Okay. This is his territorium. Mm. And he's always angry at me. Eh? He's, he's not angry to the others. Eh? But uh, he thinks, yeah, this guy is talking too much, maybe. <laughs> go, go. I said, the, the chicken who walks with her own cage, well, it's like this, huh? I made it when I was, I don't know anymore, maybe early, early 20. Yeah, or maybe that one, I think I, I made it when I was 18 or something. <laughs> Put it. And actually, the whole philosophy was already inside, huh? The dogs are nice, huh? Don't worry. So I, I started. I started here actually. This, so this place, you see that my uh, living room and my my studio was the same. Now there is like a, like an office, a private office. But before there was, of course, there was a really uh, for, to make painting and sculptures. And so I started very small. Huh? <laughs> this, yeah. Yes, this is, uh, if, you, if we go upstairs, this is the living place. But you see, there is, for me, no difference between living and, um, and, uh, and work. Eh? 
And unfortunately, my wife died one year ago, and uh, which was, uh, yeah, which is very hard. So, and she was actually the one who, um, so she, she was a nurse, and she was the head of uh, home nursery in this, in this neighborhood. She did it for 28 years. And then uh, since four years, you know, she came into to, to, to my business, you know, because she said, okay, we, I can, I will take the leading of the farms. This is actually a very important collection. This is the Kubalaya. And uh, the Kubalaya is uh, the chicken from Cuba. And this is actually the, the multicolored one, the white one, the black one, and I have them all. And in 13 years... Here are, this is the field with the roosters. So like they're mainly running hens and here mainly running roosters. Some people, you know, think that I'm the chicken man, you know, but actually it's about crossing. So my idea is about crossing and diversity. And, uh, and so this is quite an interesting uh, project as well. So the... <laughs> and there are already five generations inside of these pigs. And you see that they are wild, huh? This is uh, with the hair. There's a bag, eh? Okay, yeah, ready for the storm. Now we can go this way. Um, so this is the sculpture Joy and Wisdom. Uh, it stands of the beginning of the park. I think it's very essential. We need joy and wisdom to move on. Uh, so the body of a monkey and the head of an owl. Everything what you see here is conflict. So the snake is waking. Uh, waiting until the eggs are coming out, but when the eggs are coming out, the snake is the one who is eating the chicks, you know? This is my medusa. Uh, I use it a lot because medusa is, uh, uh, is always like a little bit scary, but it's also a healing person because the first um, medication is made by chicken, po by, sorry, by snake poison, and then I changed some of them in chicken heads because now most of the medications are made by, uh, from chicken eggs. And here you have the cosmopolitan chicken project. There are 20, 26. Uh, with the diversity uh, of all the different generations together. There are 20, 26. Um, the 26th, we are still waiting until some is dying and then we can put inside. This is this pinacotheque, like I said. See there, it looks actually when you stand in this cage, they look small, but you know, if they come downstairs, they are like this, huh? Their wings are two meters and they're really on the border of extinction. Huh? And we try to breed them, but uh, they have to, first of all, they have to be 10 years before they breed. 
Uh, these ones are 11 actually, but still there is no... Um, I, I will not say no friendship, but uh, offspring not. And for this year, I think that it's already passed, or, or it must be in a couple of months. Happen, but uh, I think we have to wait another year. <laughs> there is no doubt when they see the other birds there that they will catch them and eat them. And this is how, how nature works, you know? And we don't understand. We, as human beings, we think, uh, we think that we are standing above that. But it's not true. I mean, we are in the middle of the same game. Eh? So, these are the machines to making the crates or um, any kind of uh, uh, works. Um, but also very, very clean. Eh? Because if you don't make order, you cannot do anything. Um, because when we start tomorrow morning, you know, we start from scratch. Uh, so these are different installations we're working on. Here you have the, the electricity part uh, where we do the neons. Uh, here we just yesterday we finished an installation that we installed in Holland. So we had the different paintings on it. Um, this is a kind of storage. But actually I have another storage uh, which is not in La Biomista. To, to storage all the art pieces. It's about 1,000 square meter to, to storage. But anyway, this is also crates. Uh, And then I have two floor storage here. What's in the minus twenty? Is it a fridge? Uh, this is actually the fridge when the animals die. You know, they go in the freezer. Uh. Yeah. So you want that <laughs> there. <laughs> this is a storage of many years. Huh? It never ends. It never ends. No, no, no. <laughs> Here, this is the lab. Um, so, all the blood samples that come from uh, uh, that come from the chickens, for example, we put it there in the in the, in the freezer, which is minus eighty degrees. Um, so, it's a lot of diversity. It's actually the biggest diversity on chicken genetics that uh, one can have. So there are many studies that make, uh, they, they, uh, make reference to, um, to the Cosmopolitan Chicken Project. Uh, this is the data center. This, is, uh, uh, this fridge is uh, minus, uh, it can go to minus 80. We have a 62, you know, it's with an alarm. It's the one where they now put the, the RNA vaccines. Huh? And uh, this is, we have the blood samples inside and from there, the blood samples goes to 
uh, the laboratory, the different laboratories who's doing the research. This is the book of genomes. And the book of genomes in this case is a planetary community chicken. So it was the 20th generation of the Cosmopolitan Chicken Project. It's the Mechelsen Wyandot. It's the one that we crossbreed with America. So from the blood sample, they read this book and you see that all these pages, it's the sequence of one chicken. And actually, because it's a cosmopolitan chicken, the book is 30 million. Now you have to see when, when they do uh, a rendering, for example, uh, for, a, for a chicken from the supermarket, it's only 5 million. So uh, you cannot fool around with this kind of things. This is not, uh, this is not a fake. This is a reality. In Ethiopia, we have, this, um, uh, we have this book lying there in the, um, uh, in, in the museum of, uh, of the Natural History Museum in, in Ethiopia, in Addis Abeba. And it's next to the bones of Lucy, the first uh, female human that I found. And I think, yeah, this is for me a very strong concept. Um, also, the farm in uh, Ethiopia, we open with this book. People are reading the genome. It's like a mantra, you know? And I, uh, yeah, I'm, um, I, th I, I think that this, is, uh, this book has the whole content of my work.